Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another weekly recap of Genshin Impact content. Today we've got pretty small week, not too much stuff to cover. Just a few events ending, starting, a bit of Inazuma leak or quote unquote leaks, just more content release. And um, Where do you want to go Spiral next? Abyss and a bit of Battle if Pass stuff. Like to see Liu so, let's get into it. First thing I should mention is that there's an update notice for the pre-installation function for 2.0. Uh, this will be happening at, you know, 11 UTC plus 8, whatever time that is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is uh, also happening on the 19th, rather. So, the 19th of this month, which is not today, not tomorrow, but the day after at least. Uh, and that's either in the morning, I believe. It should be in the morning. Uh, sometime in the morning for at least uh, uh, Oceanic. But that is uh, happening... In two days the pre-installation function so be prepared for that another thing that was posted on the mihoyo twitter the genshin impact twitter is the inazuma diaries so this is just uh, a little thread of them talking about some of the open world stuff that you'll find in inazuma so this is uh, much like the geo and animo like little interactable mini games that you found around the map where you had to use the actual animo element this is pretty much the same thing but just for electro have to have an electro character or maybe the electro um electro traveler sorry specifically i'm not too sure but i will leave a link to uh, pretty much all these pages up here that i have if you want to take a bit of a closer look at them but there's a bunch of different toys you know uh, uh sorry mini games that you have to do to get certain treasures cool lightning stroke Strike, probe, probe, whatever you call it. Discovering patterns requires only a little patience. You've got a bunch, bunch of different mini games. I'm, I am genuinely excited to see a lot of these mini games. You got a little Tanuki down here. Next thing that uh, Mahoyo did post or put up on the Twitter is this little uh, what we, immovable, immovable God and the Eternal uh, youth, Euthemia, youth, Euthemia interactable page. Uh, I'll leave a link to this one also in the description. In this one, you can just pretty much get an overview of everything major coming to uh, 2.0, really. So you've got the characters, you've got Ayaka Kamisado, uh, you got Yomiya, and you've got Sayu. Have a little character overview of what they are and who they are, their rarity. You've got two five stars and a four star. Scrolling down even further, you've got the two weapons, obviously. You can have a little uh, description of them. The sword that blazes with a fierce violet light. Nice. And then you've also got all the craftable weapons. Uh, sadly, you can't really look at the, um, you know, details of the weapon. I would have liked to see that, but you can't see them. But you can just see them a bit closer up. On the other side, you've got the artifacts, different artifacts. And if you go any further, you got the weapons again. Going on further, you got the two new bosses, the Bellowing Blaze, which is the Pyro Hypostasis, and then the Machine Battlefront, which I assume isn't an actual boss, but it could be. I'm not too sure. I thought it was just going to be a, a enemy you find in the wilderness, but by all means, it could be another boss. But these are two new major enemies, I assume, coming to the game. Going even further, we've got the events coming to the game that are guaranteed. So, version events. At the start here, we've got the Thunder Sojourn, which is a little grapple hook event, which absolutely looks phenomenal, phenomenal in my opinion. I, I really like the look of this. You have to, you like, tether to a rock, and then you have to, like, just jump around or, like, not die. I'm not exactly sure, but it looks absolutely phenomenal in my opinion. That's the first event, Thunder Sojourn. Going on to the second one, we've got the Phantom Flow. Defeat all manner of powerful enemies using the world's gen gentlest martial art, Shinryu. Uh, this looks just like it's going to be a kill event. Just kill enemies using maybe lightning attacks. Um, nothing really else I can say about that. Just kill enemies with lightning attacks. Third event, we've got the Theater Mechanicus making a return. Uh, possibly and hopefully reworked and made to work absolutely phenomenally. Uh... I had thoughts about Theater Mechanicus the first time. I did make a video on it. Hopefully, they've fixed a lot of the issues. But honestly, from the, from what I can tell, the little sc uh, selection screen there for little events, 
Uh, the side screen here looks a bit more polished. The air arena itself looks a tad more... Oh no, it looks identical to the other ones. But, that being that said, I, I do hope that it is uh, made a bit better. Fourth event we're going to jump onto is the Lost Riches. Now, I, I saw this one earlier by myself and I didn't really get it. You just pick up iron ore. Um, I, think, I guess you have to interact with like certain things that you dug up. I'm not really too sure, but I guess it is just a pick up treasures and you get extra stuff along the way. Uh, but it, it's interesting, I guess. And that's, that's all the events there. Moving on to the uh, system update. A, a system update, that is. Is the gardening in the Serena Teapot. So this was given a bit more uh, kind of gameplay. You can see a bit more gameplay now. Uh, but pretty much the general premise is that you pick up seeds from the real world. And then you can plant them and grow them in your teapot. And so there's a quest to do it. You need to reach reputation level 3 in, in Azuma and obtain the Naku Weed from... Madarama Hyakube. So this won't be available on the launch of the uh, Inazuma. It won't be available straight away. You'll have to get to level three within Azuma. Now I'm not sure how fast you can do that. Uh, it might not be the fastest thing in the world, but it's it's early. It's level three, not too high. And you obviously do a bunch of stuff. Uh, Madam Ping. Uh, after equipping the dispensary from inventory, gadgets travelers will obtain seeds whenever they gather plants. For example, when travelers pick a sweet flower, they will also obtain a sweet flower seed. You can purchase seeds. They've been previously uh, been obtained from the seed dispensary in the creatures of the realm section in the teapot. After entering the serenity teapot, players will need to purchase a field from the realm depot, which is something that I actually will spend a lot of money on. These are, there are three types of fields in the riches of the realm, each of them being able to grow different types of plants. So, you got the jade field, which grows radishes, mint, carrot, juehun chilies. This, this is pretty much the ingredients up top here. Obviously, some other stuff here is ingredients as well, though. Uh, luxuriant glebe, specialties, and more specialties, I guess. These are just the specialties for different uh, areas. And then, obviously, you can place them, go up to them, interact with them, plant whichever seeds you want, and then they grow in two days. And that's the gardening system, really. It is um, very welcomed, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, let's talk events. So, I don't exactly know when it was. It must have been about five days ago, so, you know, be it Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, the Mysterious Voyage event here was released. Now, this event, if you don't really pay attention to much stuff happening in Genshin in the menu, there's a special event menu. You can click that and you can get prompted with this. Or if you're following the Twitter, they uh, actually released a post about it. But for this, it's a pretty simple. Uh, you get here, you press set sail, and you just get given a lot of cutscenes and a lot of dialogue. Um, you just literally just skip through it all. And you slowly discover a map, and depending on how much you discover depends on uh, how many primos. So I've already discovered this area here. Uh, so navigate the boat, the boat to the left. You go that way, and it, it pretty much this is like reading a light novel or or a picture book or something like that. So it's not really as intuitive as you'd want it to be, but and you know it is what it is. You can't really have everything from an event. This does give you, I think, a total of 120 Primo Gems, if you do everything that you can. I believe, if I just jump up here, or can I? Nope. It's fine. I guess we'll just spend all our energy. I'm, I'm, I'm also confused by the event, but it does have a little cool mini-game like this right here, what you're about to see. So this is a, if you're, anyone here is familiar with, familiar, sorry, with Osu, the rhythm game, this is exactly what you're doing. So you click start. And you usually have music, but I turned it off. But you have to just click in time with the circles. Now, this can get difficult, obviously, if you're not used to rhythm games. But I have been playing Osu for many years as a side hobby. So, this isn't as difficult for me. But, if you're not used to this stuff, yeah, this can be a bit difficult. And this is the general premise. Don't expect anything too... Fancy, you're just clicking on circles. There's no other different game mode. There's no piano game mode or, or uh, you know, guitar game mode. There's no, nothing like that. So 
this is uh, just a little osu styled basic osu styled mini game that you play throughout the web event and do be, just like a tldr it is uh, not as frequent as you think you only really do it like maybe once a day so you don't do like one of those every zone you explore it's just one a day pretty much and that's all our energy spent i'm pretty sure um yeah no i'm slightly confused as well energy spent continue we've got no energy so yeah yeah yeah. okay turn right all right i can't what what oh yeah we've got energy points i'll do that later well going on to the rewards here this is how the rewards work so you need a total of 35 explored areas i don't know how i did that but i did and you'll get uh 30 primos per box and some heroes wit here and some crystals here but that's that's the web event that was live about a, a few days ago go do that if you guys are interested in getting a fair few primo gems you can get let's say i'd say you can get 30 a day at this point but uh yeah, go get that, do that if you are interested. I'll leave the link to the actual thing in the description. And jumping over to the in-game event screen here, we're gonna go over everything that's happened and is being completed. So at the top here, we have the never-ending battle event. This, uh, all the challenges were released this week. I've covered all of them. I'm not gonna leave a link to the description, but they are on the channel. Uh, there is about seven of them. All the challenges have been covered, and if you need a guide to them, I do have those. The never ending battle ends in about two days and eight hours so do that as quickly as possible if you want a fair few primo gems again let's go over this echoing tales this is the third time but it's been going on for pretty much the whole patch echoing tales ends in four days or three days and 22 hours if you have not done this i highly recommend you do it save yourself the real money of getting the skin uh this ends in three point or three days and 22 hours all you have to do is collect a bunch of items and you get a outfit for a character. Uh, I do have all, all videos, I do have three videos covering all the locations of the conches. Go check that out if you need it. Recommend doing this, get on it. So what did end this week was the actual Kaboom Ball combat event. Now, if obviously it's not here so you can't do it anymore, but that was the event where you had to play tennis with a brick wall. And that ended today, so no more event for that. So if you did miss out on that, you miss out on a fair few Primo Gems and a limited time name card. But other than that, nothing too major. The name card, though, is kind of cool, though. So the other things that are happening in the game that is uh, worth mentioning is the ending of the Battle Pass. So you've got about two days and eight hours. So pretty much when the new patch rolls in, uh, you've got or a day before the new patch rolls in, uh, 2.0 that is, you've got uh, the battle pass ending. It's got two two days and eight hours. This is on the NA account, the America, or sorry, the Asian account would probably be about a day and a half. Uh, so if you do want the battle pass or you still haven't gotten a few things here, I recommend highly targeting a lot of this stuff. Uh, this, obviously I, I hit 50 before I, I actually had to claim this stuff, but you know, if you haven't hit 50 and you've been trying, do try a bit harder that's all i can really say and another thing that reset this week earlier this week was the a spiral abyss now obviously this is a moderately end game kind of thing if you want more primo gems about 150 per floor the spiral abyss is reset go do that and get rewards and that was it for this week guys this was a pretty small week in terms of actual content but we did have a few extra leaks and uh, a few extra stuff for the 2.0 release which is happening in about two three days be excited for that uh next week's recap will probably be quite hefty in terms of content with everything happening with 2.0 uh, obviously stay tuned for any more event guides and everything more genshin impact guides when 2.0 launches i'll be busy with a bunch of stuff so again thank you all for watching have a good day and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out